What's up everybody, my name's Chance, and today we're going to be diving into a Naya Landfall deck, and I gotta say, this deck was, at first, it was a little, eh, but after some refinement and throwing in the pathways, I gotta say, this deck was very fun and hit very hard. Um, the main issue with it was opponents removing your stuff, so I upped the number of Ranger's Gala and Heroic Interventions, and you'll see that as the matches go on, but honestly, this card, Canyon Jerboa, and uh, this card, Felidar Retreat, very fun and very awesome cards that can really boost up your landfall decks. Um, and you already had two really strong landfall creatures in the Brushfire Elemental and in the Hellhound. Now we're also going to add in Fearless Fledgling, which gets a plus one, plus one counter and gains flying every time a land enters the battlefield. So obviously the power can really spike with this card as well. And then to help us push things along, of course, we have Ruling Regrowth and Cultivate to help us draw out our lands. We have Skyclave Pickaxe, which also gives our creatures plus two, plus two whenever a land enters the battlefield. And if that's not enough, we have Embercleave to throw on these big, huge creatures that we're making, the Brushfire, the Fearless, the Hellhound, and to give them plus one, plus one, double strike, and trample, right? Now, outside of that, um, mentioned all that, we have the Heroic for protection. We do have Shatter Skull Smashing, as it is some good removal. If you have the Mythic Lands, use them. If not, don't worry about it. Cultivate Ruling Regrowth, like I said, helps us pull out lands. Kazandu Mammoth is just as much a big body creature in this deck as it is a land. Um, since we're playing so much landfall, obviously getting this thing up to a 5-5 or a 7-7 or so on and so forth is not that difficult. Um, and then down here, we do have two copies of Amira's Call and two copies of Turn Timber Symbiosis to help us draw out these creatures if we're having that problem late game. All in all, I think it's a very fun deck. It's a very low to the ground deck. And, you know, outside of like the Embercleave and the Felidar Retreat, it's a pretty cheap deck. You know, all these cards right here, all common or uncommon. Now, granted, Kansas and Mammoth and the, the Epic Lands, Epic Lands, the Mythic Lands are uh a little costly but not not required to have fun in this deck right and a lot of people already have ember cleave so if you have it like i said use it anyways this is a very very fun deck and i feel like i broke this down super fast but we've all seen landfall right you you play lands down it has the effect you play your creatures that have the landfall procs on them and everyone has a good time so Without further ado, um, this was a very easy deck to break down. We're going to go and hop into the matches, and of course, as always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Be sure to hit the like button and comment on the daily question or any of the pro tips that may have helped you or you might have an answer to. With all of that being said and out of the way, we are going to go ahead and hop right into our matches. Sarah. Needin 63 thanks for the follow. All right, we're going to keep this. I think we're going to go for the turn timber, and we're going to go ahead and enter it tap. Kazandu is a creature we could actually play down. We don't want to be playing the Fabled, obviously, yet. Um... So yeah, Lucky Clover. <clears throat> Probably Golgari. Uh, Golgari Adventures, if I had to guess about it. Also, I appear to have like the world's biggest frog in my throat this morning, which is uh, not not great. Love struck B. So yeah, it's looking like Golgari. It could be it could still be Sultai, you know, who knows, but Alright, so if I play Skyclave, I can play the mountain, but I won't be able to play anything after that. If I play the mountain, then I can play rolling regrowth. If I don't play Skyclave, let me let them know I'm thinking. So this down, plus four, it goes up to five. That down, plus two, plus two more, goes up to six. This does set me up for using the ruling though to a better potential. All right. 
down to 14. They probably play Love Struck here to start blocking our Brush Fire. Next turn we'll go Fabled, hit some white mana. Um, it's unfortunate we couldn't get Felidar Retreat down to the floor, but it's okay. Um, Fabled, white mana. We can go Rolling. We can't quite cast Embercleave, we just don't have enough. But I think we can make our Brush Fire bigger than their Love Struck Beast. So we'll see. Also, I do apologize about all the, the doors. Our doors in this house are very creaky and very, uh, very tough to close. Um, the Hellhound's interesting, but it's, it's not something that we have to worry about right now, right? It doesn't have haste or anything, so. Yeah, so this will make the brush fire elemental go over the uh, the love struck beast. I wish we could ember cleave here, right? That's a that's a big ass ember cleave. I think I'm gonna go for Felidar retreat actually. Now we're gonna take a little bit of damage on the crackback, I think. But we're taking them down to seven. Maybe I should have gotten Hellhelm down there because it means that on the following turn we could hit Embercleave. And we do still have the Mammoth to act as a land if we if we just need an extra land proc, right? Again, sorry. Sorry about the doors. Order of Midnight, okie dokie. Yeah, we got we have doors, we have donkeys, we have semis. There's a lot of outside sounds that go on here. Now Order of Midnight can't block, so they gotta have another plan, right? Smitten. I mean that one certainly hurts us. Does it kill us though? That's the question. Not yet. Not yet. And play Smitten. But Smitten can't block us either, so they're they are relying hard on us not being able to kill them. Right. Can we though? That's I guess that is the question. Plus one plus one counter. So it's up to a six six. If we swing in, we can Ember Cleave. Yeah, that's lethal. That's lethal. <laughs> Nice. That is one big brush fire. Now, we didn't get any protection that game, but we also didn't get it removed, which is kind of nice. Um, Dina Dan. Dina Dan? I don't know. It's never a good sign when your opponent <laughs> immediately casts Eliminate on your one mana creature. It's never a good sign. They're going to have more removal. They're going to have so much removal. Cultivate. Oh. We just might be able to keep this creature alive. Uh-oh. You know what I have a very bad feeling about? I, th <laughs> I think that they are playing... Um, I think they're playing that Peer Into the Abyss combo. Oh, no. Maybe not. Aha! I knew you'd have more removal. You can't fool me. Uh, she's non-creature, non-land. Okay, so they can't hit anything of ours here. 
Um, we should probably go for this, correct, Amundo? We go here, we go here. Boosty, boosty. Red mana. Although, again, you could arguably say we need a green there. And yeah, we'll play you down. Bam. They look at our hand. We don't have anything. Ha ha ha. <laughs> okay. All right, Golgari, you have proven your point. Ah, oh, there it is. <clears throat> there it is. Uh, I knew it. Oh, I knew it. That's fun. Prepare to feel the power of landfall. Bam, bam. <clears throat> now they have to have a land and they have to have peer into the abyss, right? Or we're going to mess their day up. Almost have enough for turn timber. Not quite, but almost. Cool beans getting the block. Actually, they just need to peer into the abyss, right? They had the caryatid there. I didn't even think about that. They could have just popped us. Another underworld is annoying. Especially since we're not hitting any fabled or evolving wilds. <laughs> The opponent's getting every opportunity in the game to pop this combo. Oh my goodness. Come on, bruh. Alright, this is it. We win here. You you almost had me. Dina. Dina. You almost had me. Say goodbye. GG. I appreciate the fact that I'm seeing other people play the Underworld Dreams combo, though. I will say that. <laughs> All right, the game has renewed my faith in Naya Landfall. <laughs> Needing 63 morning, been enjoying your YouTube content. Glad to be able to catch you live. Hey, happy you've been enjoying it. Can't even hear the door, so no worries. Oh man, there. <laughs> I have like headphones on and I can hear them, so that's why I apologize for them. PR guitar. I kind of like the way that rolls off the tongue. We need to go first, and this is such an interesting hand. I'm, I'm going to keep it. I'll keep it. I don't love the, f like, now that we have landfall in standard, I hate, hate playing a turn one fabled passage because I'm like, oh, but that could be two landfall procs. <laughs> but sometimes it's, it's what needs to happen. So this is one of those times. Long story short. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and get down the green mana. We'll get down fearless. We'll, ooh, nope, nope. We got to do it this way, right? Well, then again, we might want to wait a turn. You know, we might should have, could have, would have waited a turn. I'm actually going to not play the ruling regrowth here, because if we play that, then we have no mana for Ranger's Gall or protection on our creature, and we've seen that that has been so terrible in the past. And Rolling regrowth is actually instant speed, so we can wait until, you know, they're in step. Okay, yeah, or till right here, right? So, let's sacrifice a, a forest, because we know we have more of those. There we go. That's good stuff. That's cool beans, right? Although, the argument could be made that we needed two green there, so we could have mana for Ranger's Gal. It's a little awkward. Tell you what, we'll just play down another Fearless Fledgling and just save the mana for the Ranger's God. We can swing in with our other one. They're definitely not gonna block it. Yeah. Bam. And now come next turn, we can actually swing in and have Ember Cleave available to us, which means if we hit a land, we can make our bigger Fearless Fledgling fly and be a 5-5, five, five, and then we hit it with the Ember Cleave, so then it's a 6-6 six, six with Double Strike. The other one goes up to a 2-2. Two, two. 
Which means that that's actually lethal if we can just hit a land. We'll have to see. We'll have to wait, hope, and see, though. Opponent playing Simic Landfall. Gotta say, I am a fan of Scoot Swarm, so not upset to see it. Not upset in the least bit. I don't like you just passing your turn. Gotta say, I would much rather prefer you to play something, so I'm not so worried about you countering my shit. Because we all, we all know how that game goes. Hmm. <laughs> a tricky situation. I'm not gonna lie. I was really hoping I'd hit a land there. I was really hoping I'd hit a green land. But beggars can't be choosers. Let's swing in. Let's smash face. See what they got available. They're contemplating it. They're contemplating it hard. I just want to know what you have good sir or madam is it bounce is it removal what in the hell is it do I go for the ember cleave or do I just go for the rolling all right whatever Let's try it. Um, again, we need to sacrifice the green. Yeah, because we don't have any more red. So if we sacrifice the red, then we just we just lose our ability to cast Ember Cleave, and that's that's not a situation I want to be in. So flying and flying. We're gonna take him down to eight here, given things just kind of go okay. I, I feel like there's some bounce coming on though. I feel like I I should have should have could have would have used my Ranger's Guile. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I get I guess it's not the end of the world, right? At least our creatures have flying when when a land enters, which means they they are good after a certain point. So I think what we should do is play our Fearless down next turn, leave up the mana for the two Rangers Giles. That's going to hurt us. Yeah, so I think earlier whenever I grabbed the red mana for Embercleave, I should have just grabbed two, two Forest to protect my creatures better. I think that would have solved a lot of my issues. But we we are here now. We are here in this uh, crazy scoot swarm world now. <clears throat> it's unfortunate that I only have one white mana, but I do think it needs to be spent here. And of course, we can heroic intervention and still be able to block out creatures. We're going to need a pretty smashing comeback, though. i got to say, these Scoot Swarms are not going to be easy to take down. Actually, I think we lose here. There's no way we're going to be able to get enough, is there? And they're about to create four more things maybe eight more things depending let's see yeah. gg gg pr guitar man our mistakes our mistakes cost us in the end Oh yeah, my my decks aren't like actively updated. You can see all the past ones we've done, but as far as like looking to the newer ones, it's a little hard. Dunk Apotamus. Dunk Apotamus. 
Alright, I love it. I love it. Um, what is this? Is this green or what? Green or white and red or white. Alright, well, we definitely need the red so we can play this turn one. We might go for the white so we can play Fearless Fledgling. Don't get me wrong, Skyclave Pickaxe is fun. It is good, but... Okay, beautiful. We don't... We don't have to make a choice now. We just... Bada boom, bada bam. We don't have any protection, though. No protection on our board. Ooh, nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. So are we going for the rolling just off the Ripperino here? Yeah, I think so. I think so. What are we sacrificing? What are we sacrificing? We're not sacrificing green, even though we're going to grab green next time, I guess. That would have been fun. We'll, we'll grab white. We'll grab green. Sure. Boom, boom. Get in for the easy peasy lemon squeezy 10 damage. <laughs> Oh man, that's rough. Dunkopotamus. They're scooping it out. 